Good morning, friends. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream from Dulcimer Crossing. My name is Steve Yulberg, <clears throat> and today we're going to be talking about pro chord progressions that work through the circle of fifths. <clears throat> so I'm wondering if we might need to review first what the circle of fifths are. I like in workshops to say the circle of fifths is not a, a whole clock of um, liquor in bottles sitting around a table. But um, sometimes as you're looking at it, you might think that's what you need to understand it. <clears throat> Let me share my screen. I'm going to share. Why can't I find this? Let me get this up here. There we go. That's what I want to share. <clears throat> Let's look first at the Circle of Fifths. This is a booklet that Aaron May Lewis and I put together for our 2020 Leap Forward in Your Music Understanding Music Theories If Dulcimers Mattered class that we did on Dulcimer Crossing. Um, to begin with, the Circle of Fifths is a way of understanding how the, the 12 tones of the musical scale organize themselves in a, in a chord way. So the, you might have seen this before. There are 12 steps around here, just like 12 points on a clock. Uh, my friend Karen Ashbrook has in her studio a Circle of Fifths clock where instead of 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all the way around, she's got C, G, D, A, E, because each one of these corresponds to one of the points, the 12 points on the uh, on a circle. And that I just think that's a lot of fun. It helps to orient this too. But for example, the, the, chord, the big letters are the names of chords as we go around either direction. If I go around the, the fifth side, so G is the fifth of C, D is the fifth of G, A is the fifth of D, E is the fifth of A, B is the fifth of E, F sharp is the B fifth of B, and I start bumping into these, D flat's the, B, the, the fifth of G flat, A flat the fifth of D flat, E flat the fifth of A flat, B flat the fifth of E flat, F the fifth of B, and C, the fifth of F. So I can go all the way around and they have equal relationships with each other. But of course, if I go the other direction, F is the fifth of C. B flats, F is the fourth of C. That's the here comes the ride. F is the that interval. So F is the fourth of C. B flats the fourth of F. E flats the fourth of B flat. A flats the fourth of E flat. D flat's the fourth of A flat. G flat's the fourth of D flat. This could also have a sharp name. And the sharp would be C sharp on the outside. It'd be A sharp minor in the, in the inside. <clears throat> and going on, F sharp. <clears throat> B is the fourth of F sharp. E is the fourth of B. A is the fourth of E. D is the fourth of A. G is the fourth of D. C is the fourth of G. And this just says that there's an equal relationship between all the chords as we go around the scale. And there's another cool thing about it. Here's a couple places to connect with your instrument. But as we go around the, the fifth, going around clockwise, the fifth side, each time we go to a new key, we add one sharp and they always come in the same order and they never leave once they're in. If we go around on the fourth side, we're adding one flat, and they never leave once they're in. The three that we tend to see the most in the dulcimer world are these three. One sharp, two sharp, or three sharps, which correspond to G, D, and A. Turns out that, here's, here's a cool thing, if I tune my dulcimer to D, and I have a six and a half fret, I can play all the chords you need for the key of G, which are these. I can play all the chords I need for the key of D, which are these. I can play all the chords I need for the key of A, which are these. It's, it's just cool. That's without retuning while staying tuned to D, A, D. 
So what, let's go back I, in my recent um, the class that just ended yesterday, the practical music, practical music theory for dulcimers. One of the things that I was demonstrating was we talked about this before, but one of the things that, let's see here. I see a question. <laughs> um, but I'm not seeing the question in here, so I don't know where. Talon, you asked the question, and I'm not sure where you asked it. <clears throat> so, yeah, Jamie, the, <laughs> we're reviewing and uh, sharing more broadly. So what I shared with the class yesterday were some progressions, chord progressions, that work their way through the circle of fifths. And let's let's use this one first. And I'm going to stop the share for a moment. And go back to send you to the stream. Okay, how do I stop the share? There we go. And I want to change cameras. My engineer's a little slow today. But if I play five foot two eyes of blue, five foot two eyes of blue, but oh, what those five feet can do, has anybody seen my gal? Uh, I missed one. <laughs> D to F sharp to B to bum bum ba da bum bum ba da ba 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 ba. Turn the pose, turn down, turn the pose, turn down nose flapper. One of them of those has anybody seen my gal? Now if you run it to five foot two, all covered with fur. Diamond things and all those things you can bet your life it isn't her. But could she loo? Could she woo? Could she, could she, could she coo? Has anybody seen my gal? Usually play it on a guitar, so I'm not used to doing it on a dulcimer, but it was you could see it was a familiar progression. I went from a D to an F sharp, which may, took me to a B, which took me to an E which took me to an A, which took me back to D. So it was a way of getting around the circles to get back home. So now let's take a look at our comparison. So I started with the D chord. Let me get that bigger. Started with the D chord. I went to the B chord, or the F sharp chord, and then I walked all the way back down through the circle of fifths until I ended up at home. Let me, I can't point on the screen and play, but let me play while the pointing is happening, or while the talking is happening. D, F sharp, B, D, 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 has E, A, A, D, B, E, A, D, 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 F sharp, B, D, 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 has E, A, A, D. Now if you F sharp, I'm going to just walk back down, B, E, A, D, F sharp, B, E, A, A, D. The only time the G entered in there was as a turnaround at the very end. So this is one of those tunes where the four chord is the turnaround rather than the five chord. Now, why, why is this helpful? You might say, it's not helpful. I don't, I don't understand this at all. But when I was going to jam sessions to learn how to play with people that I didn't have music, we didn't have music in common, I was going to learn to get to know the community because I'd moved to a new community. And um, I was focusing my life in music instead of what I was doing before. 
So I went to the, the Wednesday night jam at Avogadro's number in Fort Collins. And it was a wonderful, welcoming group of people that where there would be tons of different instruments every night. You never know which week who's going to be there. Sometimes there'd be a smaller group, sometimes it'd be a bigger. There'd be a whole bunch of people sitting around the circle just having a beer and listening. Um, and and the, everybody would bring a song or just play a song. And I learned about jam etiquette. The different different people do that in different ways. I learned about that, but I also learned the clues that people were saying to each other. And I mentioned this, this is the review for you, Jamie. I mentioned this in the class yesterday that I, I knew chords. I knew my instrument, but I didn't necessarily know the songs and I didn't know how people communicate with each other. And somebody would say, let's do uh, Alabama Jubilee. And I'd say, okay, I don't know that song. And my friend, Mike, who played banjo would say, oh, this has got a circle of fifths walk in it. And I thought, I, I know what the circle of fifths is. I've heard of that before. I don't know how it applies to a song that I don't know. But we started, and I'm going to say we started in D, and then all of a sudden we were on B, and that took us to E and to A and back to D, which was very different that when than when we played songs that we had D, G, and A as our chords. And so... <laughs> Um, maybe this analysis will help you with your paralysis, Doug. <laughs> um, so what, it, it became a clue for me to say, oh, that thing, I didn't understand what that was called. But there are, particularly in um, ragtime music, there's a lot of the circle of fifths walking. And it doesn't happen. There are other kinds of music where that doesn't happen. But in that one, it does. And it's it's... I think elegant. Um, and it's a clue for me when people would say, they would just say, this is a circle of fifths. So I, I don't know when it's going to happen, but I start hearing that, that kind of, and all I'm doing now is playing bar chords when you can see my hands. I was just playing bar chords, which made it easier on the mountain dulcimer to be able to do that. On a hammer dulcimer, I could do a similar thing. Well, uh, let me do that in D, and I'll I'll just demonstrate how that is accessible over here as well. And what I'm going to be doing is just playing the the courses that are that are uh, parallel to each other. So I've I'm going. If I play this one, I've got the fifth on the other side, which is also a circle of fifths kind of thing. But here we go. Five foot two, eyes are blue. But oh, what those five foot can do. Have anybody seen my girl? Turned up nose, and it's turned down nose. Five foot yes, sir. Has anybody seen my girl? Now, if you want to choose five foot two, I'll have her with her. Now, that's not quite filled out, but it is a way to see how when I stayed right around in here, this was the circle of fifths. I was going to my three. I used this one over here. Six is the same as this one. And then I went to my two, my five, and back to one. One. So I used two, three, I didn't use four yet. I used five, six, I didn't use seven. And it wasn't until I got to the end for the turnaround I did that. Now, if I go to, I could, the, the beauty of this is I could move it up a box. So now I'm in G. Five, five foot two, eyes are blue. But oh, what those five feet can do. Has anybody seen? Down to A. Five foot two, eyes are blue. But oh, what the 
comes five foot two, who has come to fight the same right now. Turns up the nose, turns up the nose, clap her, that's so wonderful. Send her by the same right now. Run into a five foot two, all covered with fur. So both instruments are laid out in a way that makes them the circle of fifths very useful and accessible for playing the music on them. Piedmont Blues versus Delta Blues. Okay, you're talking about that same period of time, but in North Carolina, uh, uh, Piedmont. Jim, yeah. You could use the name of the chord as, as a bass movement. I don't know if it'd be a one a run as much because they're bouncing around, but that would be a way to deal with that. So what I want to show you now, and this is something um, people like Jamie who have a chromatic instrument will find this even more exciting. I want to share a window. I want to share this one. And we talked through these yesterday. Let's make this one bigger. Oh, it's a little bit too big. And now, there we go. There are several progressions that once we... Once we start and use the same movement, they'll get us all the way around the circle until we end up back at home using all the chords. And the first one that's listed here is a circle of fifths progression. If I play... So I play the one chord, which is a C. I go to the two chord seven, which is a D, and I end up on G. Now my G, that's still the wrong one. Thought I fixed that. Okay, well, I'm bummed because I thought I fixed this one. Uh, maybe jump around the circle, Jim. This one should go from D to E7 to A rather than B. And I fixed this yesterday. I don't know how this showed up as unfixed. Well, it's like when your dog's fixed and you get another litter. <laughs> now G to A7 to D, D to E7 to A, A to B7 to E. F sharp 7 to B, B to C sharp 7 to F sharp, F sharp to G sharp 7, C sharp, C sharp to D sharp 7 to G, D sharp 7 to G sharp 7, which is also A flat. So, a sharp 7 to D sharp 7, E flat to B flat 7. <laughs> e flat is going to, um, <laughs> E flat's going to A flat, A flat. And now I'm in E flat. I need to go to F7. And B flat takes me to um, to G7, takes me to D7 or to C. And I'm back home again. I, I had a couple stumbles as I was going around. But that's why I do it, so that I don't stumble as much. 
Now, this is a progression that works going the other direction, backwards through the circle of fifths, by just using the one chord as your pivot. So my one chord becomes a one seven chord. So I play C, and then C7. What do you need? It's, it's on the counter. C becomes C7, which takes us to F. F becomes F7, which takes us to B flat. B flat takes us to B flat 7, takes us to E flat. E flat, E flat 7, A flat, A flat, A flat 7, D flat. D flat, D flat 7 to G flat, G flat to G flat 7 to C flat, which is also known as B. <coughs> C flat to F flat, well, that's E. E to E7 to A, A, A7 to D. D7 to G, G, G7, C, and we've walked all the way around the circle going the opposite direction. <clears throat> now, there are some others that we won't get into today, but those are just, um, your eyes might be spinning in circles already. And I'm going to make sure that piece is finished. I promised the class when I added that to their handout list that it would be fixed, and I posted it after I fixed it. So I don't know how this one remains. <laughs> there you go. Keep going till the chord name looks like a secure password. I like that. <clears throat> but the point is, the, the, the beauty of the circle of fifths for me is it shows that in I can get lost, but the music won't. Yeah, that's what you really wanted, isn't it, Doug? But there's that. this is one of the reasons that people can say there's no such thing as a wrong note, because they all relate to each other. They may be distant relatives, and it may be jarring <clears throat> to go from somebody to seeing someone 40 years into the future to seeing someone 100 years in the past just in in passing right away that can feel strange um but we're all related to each other now the question that always raises okay this is this may be interesting as an exercise yeah and we don't talk about e flat that one you know the one that went to jail um <laughs> But it, the question that gets raised is, how is this helpful for me when I'm playing my dulcimer? How is it helpful for me when I'm playing my guitar? Well, these these exercises are more for, helpful on a chromatic instrument because like Bach did in his, his prelude, um, the one that goes through all the tonalities, and everybody else who practiced writing and arranging music in the classical period and romantic period did that they would go all the way through all the tonalities using all the sh sharps and flats and those keys that they could. And <clears throat> it, while it may be difficult for me to play, it demonstrates that there is a path, there is a way to get through everything and come back home. And to me, that's a comforting thing. When I come to a, a, a song I want to play, though, one of the things that's useful, and this is an assignment we can all do, is I can, let me share my, let me share the other handout again. Did I close it? No, I just moved it. Hold on, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> no. Uh, 
I want Chrome tab instead of window. There we go. Let's use the little elevator thing. That's what it'll do. If I have a song like Boil Them Cabbage Down, my first chord is a D. My second chord is a G. Then my first chord is a D again. Second chord is an A. <clears throat> so my first chord is a D. D, 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 G, G, D, 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 A, D, 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 G, 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 D, D, A, A, D. So I'm bouncing back and forth between the one chord, the four chord, and the five chord. And Ah, this is a this is a good example. If we, I like. Thank you. Um, I don't in John Hardy. That's a great question. It doesn't follow. It's still working on the circle of fifths. So I start off on C. Um, this is a fun one because I got to play it with, uh, oh, I'm forgetting his name, James McKinley, the banjo player at Winfield when he invited Vi and I to join him on his closing set on stage four at Winfield. And I was playing my, my Galax uh, instrument. This is one of the tunes they called. I just, everything was tuned to D, so I played it with them. It is a unique kind of tune that, but I'm looking at it in the circle of fifths and it makes sense now because here's where I'm going to land, but I go here first. I go to the four, I go to the uh, four chord of C and I go to its four and come back to it. And if I want a quick turnaround with the five, I do that. I don't know that we used that turnaround to the five when we played it. If I move that so it's in D, it's going to sound like this. <clears throat> so I could transpose it to D to put it in a framework that we might be more familiar with. But when you're in the outside world, outside of dulcimers, people like they like to have the song and the key that it actually was born in. But if you, the, an exercise for you is to take any song that you already know, take this circle of fifths, look at the chords, and look what happens and how they relate to each other. The And just as a Quick note at the end of this, the, the minor chords in the middle are the other ones that are in the family that belong to D, if I circle this. And they are all the relative minor chords of whatever's on the outside. If I circle this, these are all the this includes all the notes in the G or in the D scale. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, and the C sharp is in the F sharp minor or the A chord so i don't hear c sharp over here but it it usually in well it's it's gonna in the scale come out as a diminished kind of chord we're not going to go there today
so while I, I, I see, Doug, that you have uh, punished people with uh, putting that in just to be mean. Ooh, your baritone ukulele. That'll be great. You'll be able to, yeah, you can, you can work through that whole, those chord progressions with that. And it's true, when we get past four sharps or four flats, it's a lot. <clears throat> Fortunately, on a dulcimer, all we have to do is retune it, and we can play in those keys. We don't even have to think about all that stuff. What key do you want it to sound like? Okay, I'll tune it so that it works. Well, friends, thank you for your attention today. I do want to point out, coming up very quickly, let's go to, well, there's there's a couple of things that I want to point out. Let's share Chrome tab. The Resonator Dulcimer Day is coming up on March 12th, and the website is live for that. If you just go to resonator resonator com, that'll take you there. We have uh, five hour-long workshops, a builder's roundtable. There's never been a gathering of all the people who build these instruments. And uh, open mic for everybody who comes. And then a closing concert. And everybody who's, who registers gets a digital copy of my book for method and resources for playing Resonator Dulcimer as well, and an archive of the events. So if you've ordered one of these and it's not there yet, you would still be able to absorb it and then apply it later. And let's see if I can, that's not doing it. So let's stop that share and let's go to And two days before that, we we're very excited. To have live events, Carmen Amrein, who is from Germany, is going to be here. She, because she has two young children, and so that this particular live workshop is going to be at 12 30 p.m mountain standard time uh we'll curate aaron may and i will curate and then rebroadcast that at a regular 5 p.m time but as she says it's german polka time get your later hosen or dirndl out and learn one of the most popular german polkas every hack play, hackbrett player knows from scratch the schnapsein bringer and so she's going to talk about that um She said, there's a very fun tradition behind this tune. It wants to earn me my very first whiskey in Cork in Ireland. <laughs> so I do want to hear that story. Um, this is available for mentor and, and uh, workshop members of Dulcimer Crossing. And it's her workshop is available, as all the other ones are, as, um, as an a la carte thing. You can just purchase that workshop. And with every workshop, you get the archive of the workshop so you can study it later. So those are the two big things coming up, as well as next Wednesday um, is Ash Wednesday in the Christian tradition. And that begins my Wednesday Lent dulcimer-friendly evening prayer play-along service, which happens on Zoom. And if you're interested in that, just, just drop me a line, Steve at Owl Mountain Music and I'll let you know how to do that. There have been people working on in class for the past two months at learning both the evening prayer service or re, re, um, reinforcing the evening prayer service and then learning the Lent tunes. And for the people who come to the actual event, there is a worship booklet that has lyrics and chord symbols so that you can chord along as we're playing. And things are in the key of D generally. So... Um, that's coming up. And if you need to register for that in order to get that paper, because I, I don't know where, who's coming. And that's how I know who to make sure they get that paper. So 
for today, that's that's what I have for us. If you have other topics, please write and let me know what you think you'd like to know more about. And uh, I will look forward to seeing you again next week. But right now, thank you very much, friends.